This week on Us Weekly Style Files, we're breaking down the bikinis the stars are rocking on their winter getaways. I just worry a little bit about her lately because she has been posting these very risque photos. Then what the bride really think when Kendall Jenner showed up in this to her wedding. Plus, we're celebrating Kate Middleton's 40th birthday with a trip down memory lane. We've got that plus so much more on today's Us Weekly Style Files. Oh. Hey guys, Christina Garibaldi here with the always stylish Gwen Flamberg, Us Weekly's beauty and style director. Hi Gwen, how are you? Hey guys, great to see you. Yes, I'm, and I'm so excited because this week um, joining us today is Sasha Sharnan Morrison, the author of Secrets of Stylists, an insider's guide to styling the stars and style director at CBS Watch Magazine. Welcome, <laughs> Sasha. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm so excited to get into it because this is the show where we tackle the good, the bad, and the wacky looks that the stars are rocking right now. But before we get into everything, because we have a lot to get to this week, we want to uh, check in with some of the comments from last week tiffany morris said courtney and travis is not going to last Woof. bold opinion <laughs> <laughs> i guess only time will tell <laughs> like what, would, what are we gonna do i know right <laughs> we've got a hulu show to get through guys we've got a show we've got at least one season let's see what happens let's That's see what happens. That's true. <laughs> all right so while we are shoveling snow here in new york it is blistering cold a lot of the stars are headed to the beach and rocking some itty bitty bikinis so let's break them all down in this week's in case you missed it Let's kick it off with uh, Kim Kardashian because she is just not only heating things up with Pete Davidson, she's also heating it up on Instagram. She rocked a sexy bikini while on vacation recently with Pete and she captioned this photo, a sweet, sweet fantasy baby. Now, the funny <laughs> thing is, instead of commenting on how she looked, some of her 276 million followers couldn't get over that she was wearing old headphones as opposed to AirPods. I absolutely love this. One follower joked, richest person still wears headphones with a wire. So so what did we think of Kim's vacay look? Is this a hit or a miss? Sasha, why don't you kick us off? I guess it's a hit. I mean, I, you know, she's living her life and she looks great. I was surprised that it wasn't like an introduction to Skim's swimwear, mm -hmm. but because it kind of looks like that. It does. But um, I th it, listen, you know what? Do whatever you need to do, whatever you can. Keep it going. Um you know, I had thought that everybody was tired of this whole Kardashian situation, not on Instagram, certainly not for the Daily Mail. Um, and I don't know. I think, you know, she's just showing that she's having like a great time with Pete Davidson, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Definitely. <laughs> Gwen, how about you? Well, Sasha, you are always my fashion Yoda, because my first thought was the same exact thing, that this skin tone look bikini is very skimsy. And I don't know if it is foreshadowing a collection to come, but gosh darn it, that girl's body is amazing. And I just wanted to see more photos from that vacation with Pete, including like, I don't know about you guys, but I was sort of desperate to see a picture of them together because how yeah. does that be? You know, Pete, who sits inside rooms writing comedy with his gajillion tattoos, would be a very interesting juxtaposition next to her body in that bikini. But regardless, that photo, it broke the interwebs. And, you know, I like to see that kind of action. Totally. All right. Well, sticking with the itty bitty bikini theme, Bethany Frankel shared this photo in an orange swimsuit. And in the accompanying caption, she penned a message to her followers all about making some realistic decisions when it comes to New Year's resolutions. She wrote, I exercise rarely and wish I did more. When I do, it's walking or yoga, but I always prioritize sleep over fitness. I eat and drink what I want and crave, but I never binge nor become emotional about food. She added perhaps this year's resolve to love yourself, to understand how hard life has been for you, to be generally healthy in a realistic way and do the absolute best that you can given the current circumstances versus some fantasy boot camp, keto, egg white, intermittent fasting, low carb, 1200 calorie, pleasure-free life that isn't a reality. So what is this a hit or a miss? And do you know, do you think it's a good idea to kind of put this health and fitness resolution kind of talk out there. Here's what I think. I love that sentiment. 
Mm-hmm. I think the sentiment strikes the perfect note. There is no balance with that bikini photo that she posted because her body is insane. That's and quite insane. honestly, her body looks better than mm-hmm. it did in bikini photos from a year ago. So, you know, I, I like the idea and I like where she's going with it, but I just don't know how inspiring it's going to be to people. I think it would more inspire um, the haters more than anything else. I agree. <laughs> well, I think that, you know, I've styled her before mm-hmm. and I've actually had a really good time with her. She's really funny and uh, she really does have an incredible body. And she I don't know, she does a lot of yoga. So I feel like if she would just be a little bit more forthcoming with that part of the scenario, I think it would be great. But I think she looks terrific. And I think that, you know, you got to take it for what it is. So she she said some really wonderful things and she does work on her body and she does work. And I, you know, God bless her. I mean, I wish I looked like that. Right. So it is something, we all? you know, it is something to aspire to. It is. But I agree yeah. with you. Like she does have to be a little bit forthcoming because like you don't get that body just by sleeping a lot. So. <laughs> no, no. And we did like an entire Us Weekly. Remember, Gwen, we did like an entire pullout yoga calendar of Bethany. And, you know, she she does have an incredible body and I just, I just wish that yes, she, she did, uh, you know, come out with a little bit more of really how, how that all happens. And I'm sure that, that no surgery is involved whatsoever. All right, well, let's move on to Britney Spears because she debuted her first high-waisted bathing suit. And this is the most clothing I think we've seen on her in quite some time. Um, She captioned this, this is my first high-waisted bathing suit ever. My fiance likes it, but I'm not sure it's crazy cool because you can adjust it high or low. Oh, Britney. Um, (laughs) What do we, what do we think of this? Sasha. Well, of course she did take it down a notch. Right. Did you notice in yes. the pictures that she wore it really high and then suddenly each picture it was like inching down for so she was she was doing creative things with it. Um, you know, another person where she has had quite a year. Mm-hmm. Um, I only wish the best for Brittany and if she is discovering high-waisted low-waisted swimsuits. Do it you know, maybe just keep the clothes on and it, it's harmless. It's fun. It's nice. I think, you know, she just needs to just, we, we all need to give her some space and that's what it's going to be. Then bring it, bring it girl. Bring it. I agree. I and mean, I 100% back Brittany. I was really super into the whole free Brittany movement this year. I felt like actual glee when she won her court battles. I just worry a little bit about her lately mm-hmm. because she has been posting these very risque photos. So uh, yeah, uh, um, let's keep it in, in at least a bathing suit. Let's keep, yeah. keep the clothes on. Um, let's, yes. That's my one comment. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Let's talk about Luanne de Lipseps because she is still on her beach vacay in Tulum, Mexico, and she rocked this tropical leaf lace up halter from the San Diego based brand Savage Swimwear and paired it with a Bali tropical leaf resort pants. Now this look will cost you $125 for the top and $175 for the bottom. So was this a hit or a miss for you? And what's the most you'll spend on swimwear and a cover up? Oh God. Am I <laughs> hearing that one? Like zero. I'm I'm not coming out of this kimono for like the next you know <laughs> year. So um, and not you know I worked with the countess as well, and you know she she looks great. And uh, I don't know if I would. Well, it's funny that you know they they know you guys know who she wore because um, you know she is the uh, Giovanni um, you know model um, the house model. <laughs> um, I wouldn't spend that much on a bikini because let's like really face facts, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's a triangle cut um, n- from nylon or Lurex or wh- whatever that fabric is. But um, you know, she's, she's out, she's being photographed. So she's going to wear something that, you know, looks cool and she looks mm-hmm. great. And you know, the, the, the era of slamming um, people on the beach is kind of over for me. <laughs> so totally. I just, I, you know, I, I, so I celebrate her. She seems to be on the right track. And um, 
uh, you know what? I think it's great. I think it's, I think she looks great. I think she looks amazing. Like yeah. I love um, that she took a photo, not in a bikini, which we have seen and her body looks right. incredible, um, which, you know, Travis made a great point last episode that it was, you know, in somewhat part due to her sobriety, which I totally applaud. Um, and I love the cover up that is an exorbitant amount of money to spend on swimwear. Yeah. I would hope that our viewers would just find some inspiration in the look and then go to Target where they have right, exactly knockoffs of that look. I would be going to Marshall's. Yeah. You no, know? or exactly. Max, I would Maxinista myself. Maxinista, yes. yes. <laughs> Exactly. But at least I have the info of who it is so I could look it up maybe. And yeah, totally. Love uh, all right. Well, let's take a break from all these lucky ladies on vacation. And for our final look, we have to talk about Busy Phillips because she got real on her Instagram. Captioning this photo was literally thinking today how I could wear such cute outfits and shoes when I lived in LA. And now that I live in New York and it's either 22 degrees or 119 with humidity out, I feel like I don't have any style. And then I caught myself in a mirror and I mean, it's a style. All right. So is this our hit or miss? I mean, I, you know, it's like, I think it's about 10 degrees in New York city today. So I feel like we can kind of relate to this. <laughs> you know, I just say, Oh yes, Hattie, you are living in New York city in the winter and yeah, you gotta wear coats. You gotta layer up. Now, you know, here's the thing. If you really wanted to look cute and chic, you could do that in the winter with your layering, with your choice of coat, if your coat matched your boots and if you wore a fabulous handbag. And, you know, I kind of love the winter with like wearing my fur lined hood or wearing like mm -hmm. a cute hat and a scarf. But sure, there's a learning curve to it, Dizzy. You know, I don't know about throwing all those things together. Some mm -hmm. call that power clashing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a hot trend. Also, I just love Busy. I always love like how real she gets mm -hmm. and... You know, here's a woman who looks beautiful in anything that she wears. And I just love that she can be in on the joke and pay, poke fun of herself. So busy is always a hit for me. But babes, you know, like maybe invest in a coat. Yeah. Just yeah. 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 <laughs> and I, of course, I had to research the coat because I'm totally obsessed with the coat now. And it's Rachel Antonoff and, mm -hmm. um, you know, sold out, of course. Um, I love it because it's a quilted coat. Celebrities have a hard time sometimes wearing coats. Mm -hmm. It's a weird thing because they don't wear coats when they're in L.A. So I found that it was very interesting and, of course, looked uh, uh, started to morph into like a Prada look. Right. <laughs> you know, because she had like this headband on and then she had this quilted thing that did not match and then <laughs> the crazy gloves and then she had a Gucci bag. So people were, you know, the Daily Mail went nuts and, and uh, you guys actually posted like this incredible picture of her. So I feel like, you know, she's she is living up to her name. She's very mm. busy, very busy, say, <laughs> busy look. And what I take from it is that, you know, you don't have to wear it all together. So pick one piece. So this is what they this is what you need to take from these things. You take a piece. You know, you don't have to wear every single piece, but take the piece that you like and then work that into your wardrobe. And that's kind mm. of like what she's doing. She's she's been out with that look maybe two or three more times. So, you know, what I start to do is I look it up on the internet and then I look at the different ways that she's worn it with jeans, with leggings, whatever, and then just take the one piece um, and then try to work it in. And that's, and that's what it's turned into now, you know, um, because the concrete carpet is, is as important as the red carpet because we don't have any red carpets anymore. Right. Really. And um, so I just, I just kind of thought that it was really fun. I wish she actually had ID'd everything. So I didn't have to <laughs> fall over the place, but it's very cool. And I think she's very cool and personal style like that is where it's at. Definitely. I couldn't agree with you more. All right. Well, next up we have style that made headlines and we are starting with Kendall Jenner's skin bearing no dress that she wore to her friend Lauren Prez's wedding in November of 2021. So this is getting a lot of people talking. So a lot of people took offense at Kendall's gown as they felt it was wrong to wear such an attention grabbing outfit as a guest to at a wedding. But the bride and Kendall have finally put all of these 
talks to rest. And sh- the bride recently took to Instagram to share some snaps from her wedding weekend, which ignited the uh, controversy. So one follower wrote inappropriate outfit at a wedding. I'm embarrassed for you. Hashtag cringe. But a few fans came to Kendall's defense with one user writing. If the bride herself doesn't gap, why do you care? Relax. So <laughs> Perez got in on the action, says, tell him she looks stunning. And I loved it. Kendall then entered the chat writing Lauren Perez, Avi asked for your approval in advance to we love a beach wedding. So would you wear this to a wedding? Would you wear this in general? <laughs> like, I mean, oh God, I feel like it's, if, if you don't look like Kendall Jenner, this is a, a risque dress. <laughs> it's crazy. That dress is crazy. It is like a bathing suit. And yeah. it's, you know, it, it's like one of those looks that has been around for so many years, but it is by this great designer, Mono, 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 Mono <laughs> who, um, you know, he's Lebanese and lives in New York and everywhere else. And, you know, everybody's wearing this guy. So for me, it was just like, this is what a Kendall Jenner would do. And I'm sure that her friend was totally fine with it and got the exposure that it needed to. She probably returned the dress after she wore it. And, you know, this is, we're in this, we talked about this before, Gwen, we're in this era of meme girls, right? So everything, check, 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 totally accomplished. Nobody got hurt. Um, And, you know, it is just, it's two things happen. One is propelling a new designer who's dressed several people, but, you know, suddenly it's like he's become this thing. And, and then, and then it, it, it ignites this craziness that we come to expect from the Kardashian Jenners. Um, now that the show's over, I don't know who's going to sign up for Hulu, but you know, it just keeps the conversation going. She's a model. She doesn't care. The friend doesn't care. The other person that came to her defense doesn't care. And I'm sure this has spawned several knockoffs <laughs> Several pictures that are going to, you know, blow up the Internet. We'll find it on Fashion Bomb Daily in about a, a, a week's time. And, you know, mission accomplished. Totally. Oh, my God. Yes, I totally agree with all of that. In fact, when I first saw that picture, I thought it was a bathing suit. Because <laughs> what is that? It's like a series of bandages. I mean, I don't even know. Now, the more interesting fact here is that, you know, we've gone into this, we've gotten into this era where brides have wardrobe changes and they wear a couple of different dresses throughout the night. But this was the first time when I saw a guest changing during a wedding because she did wear a bridesmaid's dress that was very, very sedate, a teal shift. It was beautiful. And then she changed, which I think is like, That's going to start a trend in and of itself. Yes. Well, speaking of things that are interesting, this uh, story definitely got a lot of people talking because, and just like that costume designers are addressing claims that sex in the city, Cynthia Nixon thinks she knows everything. So a little bit of background on this is that sex in the city costume designer, Patricia Fields told the Sunday times back in December, I know those gals, Sarah, Jessica Parker thinks she knows everything. And she does. Cynthia Nixon thinks she knows everything. And she doesn't even today. When I speak with Molly, it's about Cynthia. I say, remember, I remember what you're going through. Yikes. So Molly Rogers and Danny Santiago, the costume designers for, and just like that spoke for themselves to women's wear daily. And Roger said a lot of really seasoned actors and actresses have been in the business for so long. They have a shorthand to say, Oh, that's not going to work because you've just been in enough fittings to know. Now, according to Rogers and Santiago, the vibes were positive overall. They said for us, everybody was so excited about being back that it was like the best possible high school reunion. Everybody was just ready to get at it. Now the designers have had some mixed reviews of the fashion and the new spinoff series. I mean, what do you think about the fashion in this uh, spinoff series? Do you think it kind of lived up to the sex in the city hype or do you think it was a little disappointing so far? I am half disappointed because Mm -hmm. I feel like it just doesn't feel like how we dress. There's certain areas of it. Cynthia Nixon though. um, I have no problems actually with how she's dressing in the Mm -hmm. show. Um, so, and I don't think she, well, yeah, I don't think she cares. I mean, I don't think that she cares to become like a fashion plate. She has other things on her, on her plate, 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 (laughs) plate, several times. I think that she, um, 
you know, she's 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 an activist. And and I think she was just kind of doing what she was doing and everything felt kind of appropriate. And Pat Fields not being here is like, it's, that was kind of a strange. And everybody who's who's not involved in it anymore is kind of coming out in the woodwork with saying strange things about everybody. So, you know, I mean, I I. Of course, I have gone through every single look with the <laughs> film to just know, you know, what it all is. But in general, uh, I think it's fine. Mm. I don't know. There, there are bigger issues to, to to discuss about it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So sorry, Pat, who's who's, you know, getting other stuff thrown at her from Lily in Paris, Emily in Paris, <laughs> Paris, Emily in Paris just renewed for two more seasons, yeah. by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, Throughout. Just crazy. <laughs> just trying to keep yourself, you know, in the, in, in the speech, the I guess. Yeah. Trying to keep yourself relevant. But what bothered me, that's exactly what bothered me about it because there has been so much um, negative commentary thrown at, at just like that about um, that is really truly ageist, which is so interesting because yes. I find the entire reboot to be about aging and kind of how your attitudes shift and have to shift and might be inspired to shift by aging. And I was just a little disappointed that Patricia Field, who is an icon, mm-hmm. would be throwing any negativity at yeah. women. It yeah. felt petty to me. Um, and, you know, I think that the fashion in the original Sex in the City, the fashion was almost like another character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I don't think that that is the point of and just like that it's more of a subtle point um what bothers me is that the characters themselves have become caricatures and yeah. yes. mm-hmm. um don't feel authentic in any way and and don't feel like an authentic evolution of who these women would be mm-hmm. so it's like the, the 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 fashion like that's this is not the discussion that we should be having that's no. not my, yeah. uh, that's not the problem of the show <laughs> oh, oh and you know it's really film. yeah the writing i mean right. i really have it's an issue with the writing i really don't have an issue with what they're wearing Mm-hmm. Really? Right. Definitely. All right. Well, Gwen, let's get into what's in your beauty bag. I could talk about that and just oh. like that probably for all day. Never, never, never. Gwen, of course, is our style and beauty director and as always has a sneak peek of what's the latest and the hottest when it comes to celeb beauty. So Gwen, what is in your beauty bag this week? Guys, this is one of the most exciting launches of the year, but really one of the most exciting launches, period. Chanel just launched a whole new skincare range called Number One de Chanel. The exciting thing about this line is that it is made with all natural ingredients. It is truly the first natural and sustainable line from one of the old school department store luxury beauty brands. That's what makes it so exciting and so impressive. This serum, it's called um, Serum Revitalizant. It's the revitalizing serum with red camellia extract. The red camellia is the star ingredient. It actually works to help regenerate cells. And not only, I mean, look at this chic, chic, chic Chic. packaging. Can you die from this? It's like, not only um, is the formula sustainable, but everything right down to the packaging, the boxing, everything is completely sustainable. And this is just a huge departure for the luxury um, beauty in uh industry and i'm just i'm really really excited about this launch i love that beautiful it is get your hands on that i love it now beautiful there's a line that melds skincare and even makeup there's a lip and cheek balm in i believe um five shades it's it's just gorgeous modern chic cool and actually meaningful because it's good for the environment 
I love so that. I love, us. I love that. All right. But before we wrap up today, let's go into our red carpet rewind. And that goes to Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Cambridge, recently celebrated her 40th birthday. Um, and the palace released these stunning, absolutely gorgeous portraits of her by Paolo Reversi. And of course, she was wearing Alexander McQueen. But we wanted to go way back and take a look at a picture that was seen around the world of Kate when she was in her early 20s. Here she is at the St. Andrews University Charity Fashion Show in March of 2002 on the catwalk wearing a sheer black lace dress over a bandeau bra and black bikini bottom. Um, I cannot believe that this photo was 20 years ago. And I mean, she's had quite the style evolution since that period of time. Well, let's just say she's come a long way yeah. when it comes to fashion. Um, that look on the runway was um, cheesy, risque, blah, blah, blah. But she was, uh, you know, a 20 year old girl at university. Mm -hmm gorgeous, tall, who knows what she was planning to be at that time. Maybe she actually wanted to be, you know, more following in the footsteps of, of Kate Moss than mm -hmm. Queen Elizabeth. Um, and, you know, she certainly caught the eye of, of one William Cambridge. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I think that she has really grown um, in her style, certainly from that moment. But even as a young royal, when she first married William, she really played it safe. She wore really interesting, like high, low, you know, she would wear um, yeah. kind of basics, you know, really basic stuff that was very more inspirational than aspirational. And then when Megan came on the scene, all of a sudden you saw her starting to wear designer clothes and mm -hmm. kinds of like trying to keep up with um, fashion. And now she's kind of settled into this, like she's just sort of like elevated basics. But I, you know, I felt like these portraits, the three looks by Alexandra McQueen and jewelry by Prince from Princess Diana and Queen Elizabeth's um, collections, which was so meaningful and a nod to her future as queen, of course. She really looks regal, yeah. undeniably elegant, but also fresh and chic and cool. And I thought that that portrait hit all the right notes for what um, Britain and also the whole world wants to see in their new their new queen. I mean, yeah. there I said it, but it's it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen sooner rather than later. And um, she's she's it. She is it. She has yeah. She has settled into the role so beautifully, and it feels really authentic. What do you yeah. think, Sash? Yeah, well, you know, she was modeling, number one, when mm. she appeared in that thing. So it wasn't like she was walking out in the street getting a you know, <laughs> cup of coffee or, or anything. So um, so we have to forgive her for that. But she did get the attention of William. You know, mm. that was apparently one of the big ones. And, um, you know, and I think that she has everything that Gwen said. I mean, she's really settled into this role. It's a role, you know, and she's. I think she's done it brilliantly and, you know, everybody's very critical and the, puts mm -hmm. the two girls to the two women together um, between her and Meghan Markle, which I don't think at this stage is really fair anymore. Right. And I think that she really has, you know, elevated herself to become what, right. It, what, who will be hopefully the future queen of England. And, um, you know, Gwen had talked about in the beginning, you know, she was wearing Rice, Reese, Zara, right. all these approachable brands, because at the time that felt very what people wanted to see. Right. But now, you know, she's 40, right? She just turned 40. 40. Yes. And, you know, she's settling into this role and she understands that her job is bigger than just kind of, you know, walking around and wearing what everything is, you know, attainable for all of us. Mm -hmm. She, I think she has really brought it. I think the pictures are quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, show another side of her. I mean, I, I was, I was um, interested in her hair, Gwen, because yes. normally her hair is always so done and it's always yeah. done. And this just felt very free, free, mm -hmm. but, you know, elegant and refined. Yes, so, it was like, um, you know, she come into her own as a woman. Mm 
Mm -hmm. You know, at 40, this is kind of the thing, right? It's like, you don't have to pretend anymore. You are who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's, I just thought that that portrait was perfectly executed from a beauty and style standpoint, for sure. Definitely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And happy birthday to Duchess Kate, 40. Looking good, 40 and fabulous. Well, Sasha, Gwen, thank you both so much for running down all things style with me this week. Um, There was a lot to get to and a lot of information, but it was a lot of fun. Thank Thank you. you. Definitely. And everybody at home that's watching, keep commenting, keep subscribing, and we will see you guys next week for Style Files.